Faint heart never won, fair lady. Nothing venture, nothing win. Blood is thick, but water's thin. In for a penny, in for a pound. It's love that makes the world go round. Oh, I say, you're gorgeous. That's what you are. Absolutely gorgeous. How anybody can keep their hands off you, I don't know. Mm. <laughs> oh, and such lovely legs, too. Well, I'll have to go. I'm sorry about the car. I, I know it's on a double yellow line, but it's only been there a couple of minutes, I promise you. Hey? Oh, it's quite all right, good sir. You can leave it there all day if you like. After all, it was your car that brought us together. <laughs> <laughs> Come along, Thelma. I'll be praised. Oh, my friends. Oh, 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 mother of my firstborn. Fair beyond price. Jewel, jewel of the Arabians. Oh, my friend. How can I thank you? Oh, oh, demand of me what you will. My land abounds with oil. Name your price. Name your price. 20 million quid. Are you Jewish or something? <laughs> You were about to feed that meter, weren't you, sir? Yes. Yes, I was. It's a fair cop. No need for that. Is that dearest? No, Lionel. If you're requiring a little extra time, allow me to show you how to obtain it. Your shoe, my love. <laughs> now, let me see. Uh, about there, isn't it? Yes, Lionel. <laughs> <laughs> How about... 
Give it in there for a quick snog, darling. All right, Lionel. Better not be seen going in there together. You go first and I'll follow it. All right, Lionel. One of my latest young models. Height five foot five. Thirty-four, twenty-two, thirty-four. Very nice, dear. Thank you. And here is Stephanie, one of my most experienced models. She's just returned from Paris. Height five foot six, thirty-six, twenty-four, thirty-five. Uh, she would be ideal for displaying spring fashion at its very best. Thank you, Stephanie. And here is Bimbi. Height, five foot six, 36, 21, 36. Exquisite coloring, don't you think? Thank you, Bimbi. And thank you, Nora, for bringing the girls along. We'll let you know. Thank you, Mr. Farley. Next, please. <laughs> Good evening. The Knights of the Road Model Agency proudly present their star pupil of 1976. The tantalizing, the captivating, the exotic, smelly. <laughs> <laughs> Statistics are 47, 20, 32 and a half. <laughs> but not necessarily in that order. <laughs> Good heavens! How did that thing get into my salon? Allow me to introduce myself. I am Lancelot Castlemaine Orpington Pendrys. My protege and I have come in answer to your advertisement. What advertisement? The one on page 59 in the current issue of Salon magazine. Oh, I wondered where that got to. <laughs> There we are. Internationally famous couturier requires the services of a model to assist him in the presentation of his spring collection. <laughs> now, are you seriously suggesting that that creature could possibly be engaged to display the exquisite creations of the House of Farley? Why, it's bizarre. Oh, my dear sir, please don't jump to conclusions. After all, he's not at his best. He's only just got up. <laughs> <laughs> don't be absurd. It must be apparent, even to the meanest intelligence, that I am looking for a girl. <laughs> it is certainly not apparent from the way you walk. <laughs> oh, my dear, can you imagine him wearing my new Z line in crushed mulberry velvet with matching turban <laughs> and yellow suede boots? Why not? He'll wear anything for money. <laughs> <laughs> what have I done to deserve this? Oh. <laughs> He's utterly revolting. Oh, I don't know. Give him a good hot bath. You might find him quite fanciable. <laughs> May I point out that this establishment is engaged in the design and manufacture of haute couture garments for ladies of the highest social and financial standing. I don't get your drift. To display my clothes at my spring show next week, I need the services of a female person, a girl, a young woman. Your advertisement mentions nothing about S-E-X. <laughs> Nevertheless, he will not do. I see. Well, smelly old friend, once more we must tread the old familiar path to the Sex Discrimination Board. Sex Discrimination Board? <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. We must not waver in our battle to bring down the bastions of female supremacy. I must apologize, sir, if your spring show is disrupted by hours of litigation and other legal harassments. I bid you adieu. Oh, Mr. Farley, I, think, I really think you're right. Yes, I suppose you're right. Just a moment. Don't tell me you're going to insult me by offering me ten pounds to forget the whole thing. No, I'm going to offer you five pounds and telling you to clear off. I'm prepared to be half insulted. <laughs> <laughs> I bid you adieu. Come, Smilly. 
Careless. How did two such dreadful creatures get in here? Well, if you remember, Mr. Farley, the commissionaire left last week. And we haven't got a replacement for him the yet. The sooner we do, the better. Now, let's see that list. Where were we? Uh, Good morning. Good Lord, not you again. I understand you're in urgent need of a commissioner. <laughs> Allow me to present a suitable person for the post. <laughs> that locksmith said the sage and strike it can at any age when cupid's arrow comes to rest to blossom in a matron's breast well, i must say it's a very kind thought madam miss miss but i'm afraid as you're not on the official prison visitors list you can't come inside oh but i want to do something for those poor men especially this cold weather and it does you credit but you don't understand the risks involved why, well, some of these fellows haven't had contact with a woman for four or five years. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, well, might you quail. I mean, if, if they was to get hold of you in there, why, well, you might not come to light for months. Oh, I'll take a chance. I'll take a chance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, miss. We ain't desperate. <laughs> uh, ah, it's good timing, that. The girl should be here at any moment. I'm a bit nervous, Dennis. So I've never been out on a blind date before. Uh, it's about time you got fixed up. You need a few home comforts at your time of life. You know, there's nothing like the love of a beautiful woman. Well, what do you think she'll look like? I don't know. I told this new girlfriend of mine, if she's going to bring one of her mates, she'd better bring a cracker. Cool. Thanks very much. Oh, here they come now. <laughs> yeah, that's him, all right. Oh. Hello, Gloria, my little darling. <laughs> this is my friend, Mildred. Ah, I me. Mean, I can't believe my luck. Come on, let's go inside. I'm Cyril. You all right for money? Oh, I could do with a tickle. Forty, all right. Yeah, you better make it 70, be on the safe side. Here, uh, you go and buy the tickets, cos I don't want to break into a tenner. <laughs> yeah, she's a cracker, isn't she, eh? I can't see it myself. Ah, uh, it's wonderful what money does for the imagination. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Well, love, this is it. This is my I wish you didn't have to go. It's been a lovely leave. Yeah, it has, hasn't it? Still, mustn't forget Queen and Country, must we? So long, Horatio. So long, Dad. Look after your mum, won't you? Yeah. Be a good boy. So long, Emma. I wouldn't be so bad if only I could write to you. You can't do that, can you? You'll be under the ice for six months. Postman won't call down there. I should miss you. I miss you too. I go on. You know how I hate goodbyes. I want you to turn around, walk away, and don't look back. Makes it easier. Here I am, home again. Oh, I, <laughs> oh, I 
say I've been looking forward to this. After six months under the ice, so... Uh, oh. <laughs> Oh, come on, let's go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hello, Emma. Little Emma, come on in. Daddy, Daddy's Oh, it must be some months since I've been down in your basement, Bert. And I'm curious to know what you have done with it this time. Well, have a look for yourself, Walt. I think it's fairly obvious. You've led it to the corporation for a rubbish dump. <laughs> I have turned it into a film studio. My word, Bert, if you are going to make films, then that Alf Alfred Hotchkick will have to look up his laurels, won't oh, he? Perceptibly <laughs> observed, old friend. No, I intend to lead a crusade against the tide of blue, pornographic, dirty films while he's sweeping the country. That is quite commendable, Bert. Yes. I might add, I have seen hundreds of them, and each one is worse than the last. You are to be congratulated, Wong. You must have seen nearly as many as that Lord Longford. Uh, tell me, how many great picture films have you on your schedule this year, sir? Well, I've, uh, I've got uh, one or two epics in the scenario stage. For instance, there's a, a four-hour biblical mammoth that I intend to start shooting next Saturday afternoon. And when will that be completed? Sunday afternoon. <laughs> Guess who's going to be my leading man? Uh, don't tell me. Charlton Eston. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yes, I did consider it. But on reflection, he's got one big drawback. Uh, what's that, Bert? He's too tall for the costumes. <laughs> oh, then who is going to be the fortunate performer? Why, you are, me old lad. <laughs> I am deeply and sincerely flattered, Bert. Uh -huh. And as it is a biblical picture, I shall inform the Ealing Herald that Sophia Loren and I are just good friends. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're not going to be one of them temperamental stars. Oh, oh, I see you have lots and lots of equipment in your studio, Bert. Yes, I wondered when you were going to notice it. Come over here and I'll show you the camera. There we are. Made with these two hands, naturally. I wouldn't have thought otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> I see it is made of wood. True, but electrically operated. I think I can safely say that that's the only camera in the world that is run on a food mixer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you how it works.
happy bird. Yeah. And I'm focusing on I'm trying to focus. David <laughs> <laughs> Bird. Yes. Oh. Well, oh, it's a lovely clear picture now. Oh, there's only one problem. I seem to run out of film. <laughs> yes, you have, Bert. It's all run out on the floor. <laughs> I didn't bring you down here to criticise, you know. I beg your pardon, Bert. Granted, old friend. Now, here you will see the essence of my intentions. Think clean, no filth. And quite right, too. Now, in my next picture, I intend to embody the awesome schoolboy story with the magic of science fiction and the excitement of the Western. And what are you going to call it, Bert? Billy Bunter meets kindly sexless monster at the OK Corral. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I suppose that is the Western Saloon Bar there. Yes, this is where we're going we're to have the big fight, yeah? And these are the bottles they hit each other over the head with. Yeah, but they are milk bottles, Bert. I won't have any boozing in my films, lad. Of course, these, uh, these bottles are not real, you know. They don't hurt. Look, I'll show you. <laughs> That's amazing, that is. Yes. Oh. Go on, you have a go. <laughs> go again. Oh. Oh, well. That must be the one I brought down for our tea. <laughs> now, let me show you another bit of movie magic. Have you ever wondered when we shoot a man how the blood pours out and it's not, it doesn't seem to hurt him? Yes, I do find that extremely mystifying, Bert. Well, now, I'll show you how it works, Walt. Take off your coat, lad. <laughs> there we are. Now, slip that in your shirt pocket now. There we are. Right? Yes. Uh, now, when I say action, I want you to go like this. Oh! Like that, right? Like this! Ah! Ah! <laughs> oh, yes, that's very clever, that is. You're bleeding to death and I haven't shot you yet. <laughs> Let's have a shootout. When I count to three, you fight. Hey, Bert. Yeah? If it's all the same to you, I'd like to be John Wayne. Well, it's not all the same to me. These are my guns and I want to be John Wayne. <laughs> you can be Bert Lancaster. Right, I like Bert Lancaster. All right, all right, then be John Wayne. Only let's get on with it. Now, when I count to three, you ready? Yes. One, two... I see the Carters have got their new deep freeze. <laughs> By the way, I haven't shown you the uh, special effects department, have I? No, you haven't, Bert. Ah, well, come over here, lad. <coughs> oh. <laughs> now, this is where I intend to shoot the remake of Nanook of the North. You haven't had your screen test yet, have you? No, Bert. Well, go behind that iceberg there and I'll get the equipment out, all right? Now, I'll just get this machine into position here. <laughs> there we are. You're not going to fire any guns at me, are you, Bert? No, I'm not going to fire any guns, just a blizzard. <laughs> now, uh, I'm just getting the wind machine ready and getting the snow ready. Oh, now, Bert. when I say action, I want you to come out. When you start acting, remember it's 30 below and you're facing a false 10. Right, I'll just wind it up. Right, you ready? Yes! Right! Action! Action! <laughs> I told you, no filth. <laughs> If you want to make sexy films, you go to another studio. Oh, I'm sorry, Bert. All right. Here. Put this on. I don't want any flashing in my studio. <coughs> there you are. Give us the goggles. There you are. Put your arm through. Yes. Put your arm through there? Yes. That's right. That's right. No, uh, that's not bad. <laughs> Hang on a moment. <laughs> yes, that's very good. <laughs> it's marvellous, that is. Hang on a moment. <laughs> I'm going to have you in my next epic. 
Yes, and I shall be pleased to accept that, so long as you don't shoot me in a blizzard. No, 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 lad. <laughs> this is a classic. This is about the face that launched a thousand ships. Helen of Troy. It sounds fascinating, Bert. What will you call it? If at first you don't succeed, Troy, Troy again. <laughs> I see you have developed a hair trigger sense of humour, Bert. <laughs> that was not meant to be funny. Sorry, Bert. Well, now, as we've got the costume on, we may as well start filming, eh? Yes. You get rid of that snow machine, and I'll go and fetch it. Fetch what, Bert? You'll soon see, lad. You'll soon see. Bert. <laughs> <laughs> Good bird, what is it? <laughs> that is the Trojan horse lad. I gotta use that in the climax of my film. There's a door at the back and a hundred soldiers come out. How are you going to do that, Bert? It'll be you coming out a hundred times wearing a different hat. <laughs> Just think of it, Bert. There's this Trojan horse outside the gates of Troy. It's dawn. And there's a sound of a dif distant bugle. Hang on. about the horse, Bert. Was it the music made him do that? No, it was my fault, actually. I was saving this to blow down the walls of Jericho. <laughs> Never mind. Come up to the attic. I wanted to see a cartoon film what I'm painting. Hey. 